guys, it's Alec Mac 111 and it has been a long time since I have done an unboxing of this magnitude as you can tell by the thumbnail, as you can tell by the packages that are surrounding me. I have so much stuff to unbox. I'm going to try and go as quick as possible, but if I'm being honest, I think we're going to be here a while. Before we get into the video, uh, it is fall season. These hoodies are so awesome. I've had a few of you guys that have bought some recently. I'll throw you up here. Um, thanks for supporting. That is one way that really supports me. I love being able to get you guys these super cool clothes, and I wear them all the time because they're super soft, super comfortable. I think they look really cool design-wise. So if you want to pick one up, they're right on the merch shelf below. I'm going to be honest. I really don't know what to start with. Maybe small to big? Let's do that. All right, box number one here is actually something I traded for last week. So I traded some optics actually for this pistol and I have not seen these at all before. To be honest, I don't even know if I saw that Evike made these, but one of these dudes, that's a subscriber, he was like, hey dude, I got a mystery box pistol and it's pretty cool, but I need some optics. So will you trade me for this pistol? And I said, I've never heard of it, but that seems pretty cool. I'm not gonna try to pronounce the name to be honest. It's A-R-C-H-O-N Firearms. I've never even heard of this company before but it says Germany, it shows Evike EMG right there. This is the Type 8 is what they've explained it as on this pistol, but it feels like it's a little bit compact. I actually really like this pistol a lot. It's got a red fiber optic front sight. The side serrations are awesome. It looks really, really unique. Um, the flat face trigger with a little bit of curve on there I think is really cool too. This feels actually pretty similar to like my agency arms trigger on my real Glock as far as the look and the feel without the kind of little safety lever at the beginning. Um, magazine release feels awesome and this thing looks really, really cool. I have never used any of these before like I said, but it feels really good in your hands. Definitely feels like a pistol that would be fun to run on the field. But yeah, starting out with an awesome first pistol. If you guys want to see a review on this gun, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll make one. Alrighty, up next we have another box and there are a lot of newspaper things in here and it is always a good day when you open a box and see that little hose. We have another Polar Star. You guys have seen me get a lot of these. I absolutely love Polar Stars. I think the engines are awesome. I think it's an awesome system and I just absolutely love it. So this is a GG Combat Machine lower and upper and it has the Wolverine Inferno engine in this. Whether it's Wolverine, Polar Star, uh, Valkins. I really like HPA engines and stuff and this one is absolutely no lower on that list. Love this one. This is a combat machine lower so this is like the nicer newer versions of the combat machine lowers. I actually really like these. I think this is like they're a little bit higher end of the polymer lowers. It's got a Wolverine Inferno in there and I'm actually not super familiar with Wolverine engines. I do not know them as well as Polar Star, Valken stuff but I've heard really good things about them and I've started to really like one of my buddies, Wolverine Reapers, he's got like the MTWs and it is so, so nice and feels really, really cool. But here is the upper. This dude did a really good job packaging this. This is not a big box, but he managed to do a really good job. Um, this is the upper connected to the lower. I'm not actually sure what upper this is. It does have a little bit of fitment issues there as you can kind of tell. I don't know if this is like a AGM or one of the Lancer tactical uppers. Not 100% sure, but I actually really like the grooves on here. It definitely feels lower quality than this combat machine lower and then just a basic red dot on top as well last but certainly not least with the gun it does have that beautiful speed trigger right there they are so so nice if you guys have not gotten a speed trigger on an hpa or an aeg definitely recommend it one they look super cool and two they are incredibly functional and you if you tune them correctly your trigger pull can literally be this one is not tuned this looks like it's just stock but the trigger pull can literally be millimeters this package did include an amped airsoft regulator as well as a metal tank and then this looks to be one of the amped braided lines as well. I'm not actually sure what color pattern this is, but it's kind of cool. And then he included two of the G&G magazines as well as this stock G&G stock. It is a little bit loose, um, but I'm sure that can kind of be tightened or something. If I can, looks like this spring here actually kind of came out a little bit. But if I can push that spring back in there, I bet that'll help the retention of the stock a little bit more. But I actually really like this lower stock. Um, this is kind of cool. I've not seen this model from G&G &G yet, and he did a pretty cool job with the paracord as well. So first Polar Star of the video, very solid. Another really good packing job as well. You guys have been doing pretty awesome, honestly, on these packing jobs. So way to pay attention, way to learn, way to listen. And just like that, we're on Polar Star number two for the video. This one is a G&G combat machine as well. This one's definitely nicer. It does have a Polar Star jack amped airsoft engine in there. Alrighty, now that this thing is fully put together, we have another G&G Polar Star. This thing is actually really awesome. So it looks like it's another one of those high quality G&G combat machine lowers, one of the little nicer versions. I'm not exactly sure what the models are called, but it is still considered a combat machine based on the trademark 
marks. Does have a really nice key mod rail on here as well. It's a key mod 12 inch rail and it's got a real AFG, I believe. That's real, yeah, you can see the Magpul trades. And then this one is a Magpul STR stock, which I've never heard of before, but it looks like it's got some extra room compartment wise for batteries of some sort. I don't know if this is a PTS or an actual Magpul stock, but it's really nice. And then this grip here is the EPG 16. Uh, Mission First Tactical makes some awesome stuff. I love their stocks. And I really like how Zach set this gun up. This was probably the biggest reason why I traded him. Um, I traded him a gun that was probably pretty nicer internally, but externally, this one is solid. It's definitely a really good gun. Um, it does have the Knight's Armament Birdcage Flash Hider as well as Suppressor on here. I was actually with Z-Shot working for them when these came out, and I remember getting to prototype them, and I thought these were so cool. And I really like how that kind of comes to the end of the rail. I think that is literally about as perfect fit as you can get so awesome gun and polar star number two of the day from Zach all right for the next box we have uh, somebody saucing it up with a blue apron chef box and we have another gun in here once again no surprise here boys we have another polar star this one is a g and ARP 9 I actually got this from a guy on eBay as well he was selling this kind of package and I have not ever owned a polar star ARP 9 before I have heard really really good things about the ARP9 and the package. I think I've had two AEG versions. I know I've at least had one of them, but I've never owned one that is a Polar Star. Starting up front, whatever muzzle brake he put on this looks awesome. It's kind of like an aggressive muzzle brake, but it also doesn't have too stabby of an end, which is nice because some of them are really stabby. Uh, we have some sort of M lock grip here, which is actually really nice. Looks like it fits into one M lock segment, so it looks like he almost grabbed it kind of like this. That stock is really short in the lower, I think that was the mid position. Um, but at this extended position, actually looks like there's only two positions. Yeah. So at that short position, that is really short, but at that long position, that's actually pretty good. And I'm not a small person. Um, does it also have a speed trigger as well. And that is what I'm talking about with tune triggers. That is insane. You can see how little play there is in that trigger. Absolutely beautiful. I do not know why so many of these dudes have not included the charging handle. I know they kind of come off and some people with Polar Stars just don't run them, but it is a little bit easier to access the hop-up dust cover when you need to do that. This is an awesome, awesome gun. I think this is the stock ARP9 grip as well. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit slimmer. I might put something a little bit thicker on there to be honest, but I really like this gun and I wonder how many rounds this holds. If you know how many rounds this holds, comment below. Also included in the package is his air reg. Uh, you guys know that I absolutely love the Redline SFRs. I think they're one of the best regulators, if not the best regulator on the market. I've used mine for a long time. This one is in excellent condition. Looks like it's hardly been used. It also includes a carbon fiber ninja tank, which is super nice too. I love these light tanks. They are. In, if you're running a metal tank and you've been running a metal tank for a while and your shoulders hurt while running a plate carrier, try a carbon fiber tank. They are a little bit of an investment, but they are definitely worth it. This thing has a good old three years left of hydro as well, and then also comes with an amped braided line and a LiPo smart charger. I think I wonder if the um, FCU LiPo is just in the back here in the stock. Man, third unboxing for a Polar Star. Absolutely awesome. Comes with the barrel cover as well. Extreme Airsoft. Um, in New Richmond, Wisconsin. I think I've heard of Extreme Airsoft before. Obviously, I want to go play at some of these fields. I'd love to next summer if Rona season dies that I can kind of travel around and just take my car and go to play at a bunch of different fields so I can meet all you guys. I get requests all the time like, hey man, you should come play at this field, but I'm in between Ohio and Indiana and it's pretty hard to travel some way, but I kind of want to do like almost a circle around the country. Who knows? Maybe summer 2021, Alec Mack 101 tour. We'll see. All right, slowly but surely getting to the bigger boxes. This is definitely the longest one of the unboxing this one actually got here today i've spent the past week and a half about in ohio but this one got here to my house today so it's time to see what it is man another really well packaged gun everything's in this box and inside the gun case we got gun in one and air tank on the other we'll save the air tank for later this is that satisfying sound as we get asmr with the gun bag Ooh, up next uh-oh is it what I think it is? We have another Polar Star. This one, I believe, is also a Jack, if I am not mistaken. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. I said, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. 
Four for four for Polar Star pulls. I don't know if you guys are keeping track, but I'm keeping track and I am absolutely loving it. Um, we have a basic combat machine here. So this is the cheaper, most affordable. Everybody's seen these combat machine, upper and lower. It's got a nicer rail system. It doesn't look like it's a monolithic rail, which makes me think this is almost an aftermarket rail system. And I believe the stock one comes with like the polymer rail systems, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have a special forces suppressor on here as well. I cannot tell if the barrel where it comes to, but I'm guessing it's probably to the tip and then he's added this as like sound suppression. I don't know if it's foam filled or anything. Don't wanna look down the barrel, but obviously wanna be safe and not an idiot. He does have a Diamond Supply Co. sticker there, which makes me think he was some sort of speed softer, which all love the speed softers. I am definitely a kind of a more milsim guy. That's just traditionally what I've grown up with. It also includes a spray painted tan tango down grip. I don't know why the rest of the grip is, or the gun is black and he's just decided to spray paint the grip, but more power to you. These tango down grips actually have pretty good angles for guns that are a little bit shorter. For those of you that do not know, um, and then also up top, he does have an EOTech as well. I don't know if it has any batteries. It kind of feels light, so I would assume there are no batteries. Uh-oh. There were batteries, but the optic is just dead. So once again, another super nice puller start. Now into the air setup. Man, we've just been having some really nice regulator sets up on these. This looks like it's also a Redline SFR Ninja kind of combo. Yeah, this is the Redline SFR, which is a little bit thicker, and this is the older Redline regulator, I believe, but I've never seen this pattern for the grip or like kind of screwing that down. So I think that's kind of cool. Usually this is what they come with, but I really like it. He also included a super nice tank with this as well. It is out of hydro, so it's from 2014, but I really like the stickers he put on it. Extreme Tronics Airsoft. Um, I believe that's an SAI Panda, which is actually super cool. That's so dope. You can see yeah, even the gold barrels on the Panda itself. It's pretty funny. And then it's a Ninja Carbon Fiber tank. They're awesome. He did include a line as well. I believe this is just a basic line. I think this is just a basic red line line. Uh, barrel cover and then some sort of green laser combo as well. Oh, this is a flashlight It's a flashlight that has had the lens shot out. You can definitely tell he was a CQB guy Alrighty last but certainly not least we have a genuine Subaru box just kidding um, If you guys have paid any attention to the trend of this video You may be able to predict what is in this next boy. Wow. This box is huge. Can Alex Mac 111 do it? Oh, yay! Alrighty, if you did not pay any attention to what I pulled out, uh oh, we have yet another hose. Man, you guys have been doing an awesome job of these unboxings. I think this is the five best packed packages I have seen in a while. And ooh, baby, we got a custom Polar Star. I'm gonna be completely honest. When I bought all these, I didn't expect to be like, all right, I'm gonna do an entire unboxing just with Polar Stars and one pistols. But here we are, Polar Star number five of the unboxing. That is honestly ridiculous to think. I have five Polar Stars. I was just telling my friends, it's like, man, I don't, I usually have a lot of Polar Stars for sale, but I feel like I've sold out of a lot of them. Uh, now I got five more. So if you want a Polar Star, hit me up on Instagram, hop up, or anything else that I do social media wise, because I will be selling some of these bad boys. This is an HK416. I believe this is like the CQB version. The guy has definitely done some additions and adding of some stuff. Obviously you can tell by the spray paint job, this is definitely really different. But on the bottom, as you can tell also by the mag, if you pay attention to the angles, these are a little bit different. Um, this actually feels not bad. It looks a little weird, I'm gonna be honest. Like this is definitely kind of more of a speed soft gun. I really like the color. I'm not gonna be on, like, I'm gonna be honest. I love the green. I think it looks really good. I think it looks good on this gun. And it feels like it's got a clear coat over top. So it doesn't feel like any of this is kind of kind of wear off and it looks like some sort of galaxy painting. But I saw this on eBay as well and I was like, yo, that is super cool. So starting with the front, we have a little skull frog amplifier that actually looks like it was cut in half. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's the case, but it literally looks like this thing was sawed. At least the tip was sawed off. I know some of the speed stop guys love to get their guns as loud as possible. And these skull frog amplifiers by GMP will definitely do that. It does have a fake PTS AFG on here as well as some sort of Bravo STL 800 light. Looks like it's kind of one of the ones you can activate like that. Ooh, that's cool. So you kind of just touch the sides and pull down on it, whether it's constant or if you want to kind of like strobe it. That's actually pretty dope. I don't know a ton about Bravo flashlights, but the rail system is missing a few rail pieces. And then he's got some sort of 
key mod rail covers on here. They're actually pretty cool. I don't know exactly what brand those are. And then on the inside, which is what matters so much, we have a Polar Star Jack engine as well, as you can tell by this really cool amp line. I actually really like this black, pink, green amp braid. I don't know exactly what they call it, but it looks really cool. And then this looks like the same GMP stock from the ARP9. Confirmed question mark, definitely looks like the GNG stock, maybe a little bit wider at the base. Maybe this is a newer version of the ARP9, not 100% sure. But I actually really like this for a CQB stock. I think it feels really good. The polymer is actually really awesome. This one does have a lot more options for whether you want to have it shorter or longer as well. And the battery compartment storage on this looks to be really good. So you can kind of put your FCU and everything in there. There is a weird space between the buffer. I don't know if that needs screwed in, but it kind of is moving. And I don't know if it's meant to be like that. I will have to look into it and check and kind of make sure maybe I have to get a longer screw for that as well. And it's same thing with this pistol grip down here. I don't know if the screws came out or maybe it's just the tango down grip does not fit that well. I'm not actually sure what trigger this is, but it looks like the spring was taken out. Some of the guys for HPA like to do that just so they can kind of hit it. But I actually really like this sleek silver on that as well. It looks really, really awesome. And it's definitely super unique. Up next in the package, we have his chest rig. This is actually pretty cool. I don't know if this is one of the Speed QB chest rigs or maybe just a Condor one. He's got his Evike hex patches on there as well. Two of those are Box of Awesome, which is actually dope. It says one Tigress. So it's a one Tigress little speed. Definitely looks like a little Speed QB chest rig. My man even has the CQB sticker on his die. This thing is actually sweet. I really like the look of this color of this die. It looks like it's got a blue inner lens and a gold kind of reflective lens. These are definitely the signs of speed softers. If you see one of these guys, unless he's wearing a multicam one, he's definitely a speed softer. And he's wearing a multicam die, he's probably a cheater, just so you know. Complete facts. All right, up next, I know as soon as this video ends, I'm gonna have a ton of people that message me, hey Alec, I want those speed QB mags. Honestly, I may actually keep these. I really like these red ones. I have not owned any of the speed QB. PTS mags before these EPMs are awesome you guys know obviously what they are I sell these whenever I list them I sell them in like five minutes because they're hard to get right now But I really like the reds on these to be honest He's also got like six other basic mags and then an Odin speed loader as well Looks like he's taped this up so that the BBs don't fall which is a smart call and then finally He's got the point two Falcon accelerate BBs Oh my gosh, this is a Polar Star collection. Listen, y'all, I promise I don't have a problem. I just really like Polar Stars. Okay, maybe I do have a problem. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I know it seems like I have T-Rex arms right now, and it's because I kind of do, but I really appreciate you guys. I make these videos for you. I love doing this as well, but I also wouldn't do it if I didn't have an awesome fan base like you guys. So if you say it all the way to the end, comment five Polar Stars, baby, and I will love your comment. Ooh, pew, 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 pew. Remember, Call of Duty taught us that it's easier to switch guns than reload your magazine. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the awesome B-roll in the fall as well. That's kind of... Mm, 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 mm.